In our session today, we plan to discuss the opportunities and the potential dangers of generative AI in the B2B marketing world. There's a lot to get through. Let's dive into our questions. So, in our B2B marketing benchmark report that LinkedIn just released, about 4 in 10 B2B marketing leaders said they are currently using AI in marketing activities. Does that number surprise you, seem about right? And my second part is how quickly do we expect that to rise? Yeah, so in the sense of does it surprise me, yes and no. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a lot of AI that has already been uh, embedded into a lot of the work that marketers have done for a while. Mm -hmm. I think obviously with the rise of generative AI and just the level of traction and excitement, there is um, a, a renewal, we'll say, in the mm -hmm. AI space. However, when we think about things such as content personalization, uh, even media optimization in some aspects of it, AI has already been paying a very core role in the work that we as marketers have been doing for quite some time. Now, in terms of how quickly it will rise, um, I don't have an exact number, but I think that there are a few signals that point to the fact that it will continue to rise uh, very exponentially. Uh, so the first one is just level setting and just how quickly uh, generative AI platforms such as ChatGPT have become uh, very mainstream. Yeah. So if we think about it from the sense of uh, amassing followers, ChatGPT took about two months mm -hmm. to reach 100 million uh, followers, wow. whereas certain social media platforms, it was two and a half plus years to reach mm -hmm. the same level of following. Uh, the second thing I would say is even some of the work that you all have done in your LinkedIn B2B study, mm -hmm. as well as other data signals, really point to the fact that there's a lot of traction mm -hmm. in terms of wanting to have greater knowledge and understanding from marketers, right? Mm -hmm. So those things that are rising to the top mm -hmm. in terms of content. And then the third part is the money, um, <laughs> obviously the economic <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so a report by PwC highlighted the fact that over $150 trillion uh, between now and 2030 um, could be pumped into the global economy attributed to AI. Wow. So once again, just thinking about those various touch points, mm -hmm. I would say that we're going to continue to see a lot of traction and growth in this space. Wow, exciting times. Thank you for that. Um, my next question. With this growing um, enthusiasm around the usage of AI in advertising, we also see, again, referring back to the BDB Marketing Benchmark Report, three out of 10 marketing leaders said they are very likely to start or continue using AI in advertising efforts. Um, what do you see as the best ways to incorporate AI into B2B ad campaigns? Yeah, so I think one of the first things that we have to do is make sure that we understand the purpose mm -hmm. for implementing AI into our campaigns. We're in a very exciting time and everyone's really interested to jump in, but making sure that we are playing with the technology, mm -hmm. but at the same time using it in strategic ways to make mm -hmm. sure that we are driving goals and objectives is really important. So some of the work that we're doing at Group M through our data arm choreograph mm -hmm. really is taking into consideration data-enabled creative, uh, and teams are leveraging AI and other mm -hmm. forms of machine learning technology in sense of uh, audience segmentation, uh, dynamic creative, things of that nature. So therefore, we're able to create assets that allow for deeper personalization and mm -hmm. resonance with our audiences and therefore help to drive greater KPIs uh, for our clients. That's great. And we are at the Festival of Creativity. Yes. So perfect. One thing that is rightfully getting a lot of attention right now is the concept of responsible AI, especially on LinkedIn and our platform. We've seen these conversations about responsible AI increase sevenfold over the past year. You know, what does that term mean to you and, and what types of biases should marketers be most aware of when working with these technologies? Yeah, so I'm going to break that. I'm going to break that apart. Let's do okay. it. <laughs> so I'm actually very comforted mm -hmm. uh, in knowing that a responsible AI is getting so much tra uh, traction mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. I think once again, we want to make sure that we're slowing down a bit mm -hmm. and, and really having a pause to really ensure that the AI that we're thinking about deploying is going to be uh, in the best interest for everyone, mm -hmm. right? So I think yeah. that that's a good thing. In terms of what uh, responsible AI means to me, I think of it from a lens of ethically responsible, uh, there's fairness and inclusion mm -hmm. uh, at the forefront, and then also transparency mm -hmm. uh, needs to be included as well. And so mm -hmm. those to me are the elements that really bring forth uh, responsible AI and something that I want to make sure that as we 
continue to leverage it, uh, we're all putting at the forefront. Yes. Responsible AI, it's all of our responsibility. Absolutely. Love that. Um, fewer than two out of 10 respondents in our survey said they have extremely good understanding of how to use AI in marketing campaigns. You know, what's the main thing that brands and marketers can really do to mitigate um, biases and harm in their pursuit to get more AI efforts? Yeah, so I think it goes back to what we were saying a little bit earlier in terms of like breaking down those knowledge barriers. Mm -hmm. So as we continue to learn more, talk and collaborate with one another more, I think that some of those knowledge gaps will begin mm -hmm. to decrease um, in the sense of what can we do to make sure that we're thinking about bringing AI to the forefront in a responsible way. I think the first thing we need to acknowledge is that bias is inherently baked mm -hmm. into these platforms and mm -hmm. these systems that we're utilizing just on the strength of the data sets and mm -hmm. information that these machines are pulling knowledge and information mm -hmm. from, right? So as we think about historically, um, you know, various genders or those of marginalized races and ethnicities, their stories and the data that is reflective of their stories is not necessarily at the forefront. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're taking that into consideration, both mm -hmm. in the development and the implementation of this work. Uh, some of the things that are happening across the WPP network, for example, include testing and learning. I think mm -hmm. that, I know we use that phrase a lot in marketing. <laughs> we do love it. <laughs> we do love it, but we uh, it's, it's a good thing, right, yeah. to test and to do research. And so some of the work across the WPP network has included really understanding um, the impact of synthetic advertising mm -hmm. where humans or people are depicted mm -hmm. and wanting to make sure that various community groups are having uh, positive responses mm -hmm. to that type of creative. Mm -hmm. I think it's also worth noting that why that is important is because historically, once again, uh, groups of various kinds don't always have um, a positive relationship mm -hmm. with advertising and media portrayals. And the last thing that we want to do is deploy technology that would worsen uh, mm -hmm. those perceptions. Wow. Well, I could literally talk to you all day about this <laughs> as I continue to learn more. But unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today. I just want to thank you, LaToya, for bringing all of your valuable insights to us today. Um, for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, and thank you, the audience, for joining us today as we, all of us as B2B marketers, continue to learn and ensure that AI is leveraged in a responsible and equitable manner.